They say humanity's first step on the moon was a giant leap. But what if that step was only the beginning of a much longer journey, a journey to stay? Picture the lunar horizon glowing in the sunlight, the earth hanging like a blue marble in the sky, and beneath it, a small cluster of domes glinting silver in the dust. Not science fiction, not a dream. This is the world NASA is actively building, the return of humankind to the moon, not for a visit, but for permanence. The project's name is Artemis, a fitting tribute to the twin sister of Apollo, the goddess of the moon. And just like the myth, Artemis isn't coming quietly. When Apollo 11's crew departed in 1969, they left behind footprints and flags. The technology was miraculous for its time, but the mission was fleeting. Humanity came, saw, and left. Artemis intends to do the opposite. This time, we're building a home. But before we unpack our cosmic luggage, we must answer a question that haunted even the Apollo engineers. Why go back? For some, it's about science. Understanding the moon's ancient geology, frozen water, and hidden resources. For others, it's about survival, a training ground for the future Martian pioneers. And for many at NASA, it's about legacy. The Apollo program showed what humanity could do when it looked up. Artemis aims to show what humanity can become when it stays. The plan is audacious. Over the next decade, NASA intends to establish a permanent foothold on the lunar surface, complete with habitats, power systems, and research labs. But the road to that vision is not a single leap. It's a carefully orchestrated sequence of missions. The first step was Artemis the One, an uncrewed flight in 2022 that sent the Orion spacecraft around the moon and safely back to Earth. That mission wasn't just a test, it was a message. We're coming back. Next comes Artemis II, set to carry humans farther from Earth than any person has traveled since 1972. The astronauts won't land yet, but they'll orbit the moon, testing systems and preparing for what comes next. Artemis III, the return of human boots on lunar soil. But this landing will be different from Neil Armstrong's quiet descent onto the sea of tranquility. Artemis III will target the moon's south pole, a region cloaked in shadow where sunlight never reaches. It's one of the most hostile and mysterious places in the solar system. And yet, it might be the key to everything. In those eternal shadows lie craters filled with frozen water, ancient ice untouched for billions of years. To NASA, that's more valuable than gold. Water means life. Water means oxygen to breathe, hydrogen for rocket fuel, and a foundation for a sustainable lunar economy. Imagine that, a refueling station on the moon, turning lunar ice into propellant, sending ships farther into space, from moon to Mars and beyond. But before that dream becomes reality, we'll need somewhere to live. And that's where the concept of the moon base comes in. Early designs envision habitats half buried beneath lunar soil, protected from radiation and micrometeorites. Some will use 3D printing robots to mold lunar dust, called regolith, into walls as strong as concrete. Others imagine inflatable modules, lightweight structures that expand like space-age balloons. Each design shares a single goal, survival in a world that doesn't want us there. Temperatures on the moon swing from blistering heat to deadly cold, from 127 degrees C during the day to 173 degrees C at night. The radiation exposure is relentless, and a single mistake could mean death. Yet somehow, these challenges haven't stopped NASA or their growing list of partners, because Artemis isn't a solo act. The European Space Agency, Japan, Canada, and private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are all in the cast. Together, they're building a network, a system that connects Earth, lunar orbit, and the surface below. At the heart of this system lies something called the Gateway, 
a small space station orbiting the moon, acting as a cosmic pit stop. Astronauts will dock here before descending to the surface in new generation lunar landers. The gateway will be powered by solar energy, supported by international modules, and serve as humanity's first deep space outpost. It's a bold experiment in cooperation and a rehearsal for Mars. But the story doesn't end with NASA. China has its own lunar program, the Chang'e series, and plans for a base near the same South Pole. Russia, too, has voiced ambitions for a permanent presence. In the coming decades, the moon could become a new frontier of competition or collaboration. And then there's the question that keeps engineers awake at night. How do we make it last? A base on the moon must sustain itself. That means growing food in reduced gravity, recycling water, and generating power where sunlight is scarce. Some ideas involve nuclear micro-reactors. Others envision vast solar farms along the rim of craters. The most ambitious plans even propose turning lunar dust into solar panels on site, using robotic builders. Every solution sounds like science fiction, until you realize prototypes already exist. NASA's Viper rover, launching soon, will map the South Pole's ice. Private companies are testing lunar 3D printers. Astronauts are training in simulated environments on Earth, practicing how to live off the land of another world. And perhaps the most poetic part? The first permanent moon base may not be built by humans at all. Robots, swarming, autonomous, solar-powered, might construct our new home before we ever set foot inside it. But for all the technology, all the ambition, there's something deeply human about this pursuit. The moon has always been a mirror of our own curiosity, a silent companion through every age of discovery. From ancient myths to the telescopes of Galileo, from the radio crackle of Apollo to the digital symphony of Artemis, it's been the one constant in our cosmic story. When we finally return, when the first Artemis astronauts descend into that frozen darkness and plant the next flag, not as conquerors, but as settlers, it won't just mark a new chapter in science, it will mark a turning point in civilization. Because the first moon base won't just be a home for astronauts, it will be a declaration that humanity is not bound to one world. One day, when children look up at the moon and see a faint sparkle where once there was only shadow, they might ask, who lives up there? And the answer will be simple, we do. Because Artemis is more than a mission. It's a promise. A promise that the footsteps we left half a century ago were not the end of a journey, but the beginning of a new world.